Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are going to discuss how to analyze Nakshatra Lords. Most of the times we analyze Nakshatras but we always, always, always forget to analyze where the Lord of the Nakshatra is sitting. The planet gives results of the Nakshatras primarily more than the houses that it sits or lords okay so it sits in one place and it lords one or two houses or it may not lord also if it is rahu ketu if you do not take aquarius and scorpio but irrespective of how planet sits or lords it will always 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 give the results of the nakshatra lord that uh, of where the nakshatra lord is sitting okay so for example this is the whole scope of a person who has who has recently uh, faced uh, severe marital problems severe issues in marriage and uh, not recently i would say from a long time but now it has become very severe of course so if you see in the chart, you may think that, oh, actually, you know, Venus is in the 8th house, the 6th house is prominent, blah, blah, blah. Maybe because of that, these problems are occurring. Well, that is true, but that does not explain the full story. You have to analyze the planets and then the nakshatra lords of the nakshatras where these planets are sitting, okay? So that will give you a lot of clues about uh, what you may miss sometimes. So therefore, this analysis will help you to fine tune events of uh, somebody's life. Okay, not just give some vague predictions that uh, okay, this will happen, that will happen, but some very specific, definite point to point predictions. Okay, so therefore. If you are new to the channel, then uh, please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, then you can go to the website down in the description section of my videos. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him irrespective of where your nakshatra lords are placed. Okay, so this is a Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Lagna chart. And uh, you can see here... I have placed the Navamsha also in the side and I have placed the Lagna chart here and the Dashas are there and then we have the chart with the degrees. This is very important. That is why I took this and currently the person is running Saturn Mahadasha which you cannot see here. So Saturn is like 19 years. So from 2003 to 2022, uh, 17 October, the person is under Saturn Mahadasha and also uh, the person is currently under the Antar Dasha of Rahu which is almost about to be over by near around uh, April okay 5th April this Rahu Antar Dasha is getting over okay so let us try to see uh, the overall flavor of the chart so we will go to the Dashas later because the Dashas can never override a horoscope which means uh, whatever the majority of the planets are saying, the dashas also tend to speak in that tone itself. Okay, so therefore, it is highly essential that we first analyze the horoscope and then only go to dashas. Okay, because dashas only will give us the focus, the focal area, but it it will not necessarily. Uh, give us the results independently okay so which means if a person has um, has many challenges in part in matters of marriage or married life or in getting married also then irrespective of what the dashas are even if the dasha of the seventh lord is running the person will not have a good married life okay unless there are other placements which totally contradict those placements which are also possible their horoscopes are very complex sometimes they pose a lot of uh, drastically contradictory features okay 
so now now if you check properly uh, which are the houses of marriage okay so you can you can check here the houses of marriage in any horoscope they are the second house Mm, they are and then we have the seventh house and we have the eleventh house okay these two these three are the houses of marriage irrespective of any horoscope and then you also have the trines which support marriage the fifth house and the ninth house okay and the fourth house is important for marriage but that is more for you know home and property okay and which houses are detrimental for one's married life the prime houses are the 6th house and the 10th house primarily because they are placed 12th from the houses of marriage and at times uh, the ascendant can also be challenging for marriage but any, anyways ascendant uh, is a different story altogether but primarily the uh, the lords of the uh, the 6th house and the 10th house okay they are the ones who primarily break marriages or not in a way that they give you divorce but uh, they can uh, make you separate from the partner okay or you may stay together but not like each other or you may not stay together at all so so if the lords of these houses are sitting in each other's houses uh, then this can be a bit challenging for married life okay so if the sixth lord is in tenth or the tenth lord is in sixth these kind of placements could give you challenges in married life all right and then of course we know the eighth house is also a very difficult house for marriage because uh, the eighth house can show unfulfilled desires within a married life which forces you to go outside of marriage okay and uh, the 12th house can also show or uh, disinterest in married life or it can show uh, because 12th house is like the uh, 6 from the 7th house so it's like saying your partner is following celibacy there the partner is not interested in you okay and 6th house is 12 from the uh, 7th house but it is 6th from your your house from your lagna so it's like saying you are following celibacy so the 6th, 8th, 10th and the 12th houses, these are uh, really difficult houses and if the lords of these houses are sitting in each other's houses, then it can create a lot of difficulties in married life. So now, uh, coming to the topic of nakshatra lords, so that so these things which I told you will hold true before, Okay, whatever I said about difficulty in marriage but they will not give you the complete picture you also have to analyze the nakshatra lords of these planets okay so if you try to analyze now what is happening you see here seventh house all right so what is going on with the seventh house if you see carefully you can understand that uh, the seventh lord here is venus okay so for scorpio and aries venus becomes a very 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 important planet for relationships for scorpio and aries lagna okay not moon sign scorpio and aries ascendant why because venus is the natural karaka for marriage and it is also the lord of the seventh house in this case okay so for aries and scorpio placement of venus if it is good then it is really a great indicator of good married life and if venus is challenged then it can really create difficulties in one's married life unless other placements are really very good okay so here you see what's happening the seventh lord which is venus as the natural karaka for marriage is going to the eighth house so if you talk to this person uh, there is a constant feeling of dissatisfaction in marriage no no i i won't say dissatisfaction or it's like saying oh maybe my married life should have been better you know uh, it is good but maybe it should have been better than what it is now and that forces him to look for uh, happiness outside the marriage okay which is very unfortunate but that is how it happens but that's not the story here the story is about the nakshatra lords 
So as I told you, if the the sixth house, eighth house, tenth house, and the twelfth house, these houses are really challenging for married life. So now you see again here the twelfth lord, which is Venus, is again in the eighth house. Okay. Now you go to the nakshatra. So Venus is in Gemini, nine degrees in Ardha nakshatra, first pada. Okay. So. Ardha nakshatra is the nakshatra of Rahu. So where is this Rahu placed? Okay. If you see here, Rahu is placed in the sixth house. Again in the Navamsha also it is in the sixth house. So this makes the situation even more difficult. Okay. So therefore, this, this uh, placement of the nakshatra lord of Venus is making married life further difficult okay in the next level also in a in a more granular level you could say now if this rahu would have been placed somewhere in the second house or seventh house or in the eleventh house this could have uh, helped the person in his married life but unfortunately it seems to do the opposite all right so therefore, this is a very strong indication. Then, then let us analyze the Lord of the 10th house. Okay, so where is the 10th Lord sitting? Again, the 10th Lord, which is Sun, is again sitting in the 6th house. Okay, so again, the 10th Lord in 6th or 6th Lord in 10th, difficult placements for marriage. Then you see where is the Nakshatra Lord of Sun. So Sun is in Aries. It is exalted here, not degree wise. It is in Multricorn of course. And uh, it is in Kritika Nakshatra. Okay. Uh, of course, I am not uh, able to recall in which degrees of Aries Sun is in Multricon, but anyways, you could say either he is exalted or in own sign or it's well placed dignity wise. But he is in Kritika Nakshatra. So, who is the Lord of Kritika Nakshatra? Again, it is the Sun. Again, so again, he is sitting there only. You see, he is himself there. So, again, at a Nakshatra level also. Uh, this position is becoming very 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 challenging for his married life okay so now there are other things also if you want you can analyze so for example you can also check uh, what is the situation of the 11th lord okay the 11th lord is a very important planet when it comes to uh, married life especially okay so, where is the 11th Lord placed? If you check carefully. Mercury is the 11th Lord. Because 11th Lord shows friendship. So, if the 11th Lord is somehow linked with the 2nd or the 7th and placed in a good dignity, then it can do wonders for your married life. But again, see where is this 11th Lord placed? He is again placed in the 6th house. Again, a difficult placement. And where is Mercury placed in Kritika Nakshatra, which is ruled by Sun, which is again in the sixth house? So, so for multiple angles, if you check, the things look very difficult. And of course, we must analyze the Lagna Lord, which I should have done in the beginning. So now the Lagna Lord is in eleven. So this person inherently wants to have friendships, which is like you know marriage or relationships or any friendship in general. So this is a good placement. But unfortunately, if you see again at a nakshatra level, where is this Mars placed? Mars is in Hasta Nakshatra. Okay. So who is the Lord of Hasta Nakshatra? He is Moon and look where Moon is placed. Moon is again placed in the 8th house. All right, With this 7th Lord which is also the 12th Lord. So this adds to the problem. So therefore uh, we can understand that these placements are really 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 very challenging. And of course there are good things in the chart. So for example if you check the the fifth lord which is jupiter it is exalted uh, it is in cancer almost in the uh, degree of exaltation which is around till five degrees of course pushya first pada 
and um, if you see Jupiter is exalted it is in the ninth house that is a very good placement of course and uh, it is in Pushya Nakshatra which is the Nakshatra ruled by Saturn so Saturn is again in trines so the Nakshatra Lord of the fifth Lord is in the fifth house itself this is a great placement and Saturn is also the fourth uh, fourth Lord which is also a good uh, indicator for married life okay so there are good things of course and the Lord of the fourth is in the fifth um, as Saturn that is also a good placement so and Saturn is in its own nakshatra Uttar Bhadrapada okay so these are good placements which, which the person has so uh, somehow luckily because of the blessings of the trines and planets like Jupiter and Saturn and to some extent because of the Lagnesh being in the um, 11th house uh, this person's marriage has been saved luckily but unfortunately if you uh, see in the future so currently he is running the Dasha of Saturn Saturn Mahadasha as I said so Shani is well placed, it is in trines and uh, it is the lord of the fourth house so that also supports marriage but his Rahu Antaradasha started from May 2017 and Rahu as I said uh, doesn't look to be very well placed okay because Rahu is in the sixth house and Rahu is in Ashwini which is ruled by Ketu which is again in the twelfth house so from uh, 5th May, to, uh, sorry, from 29th May uh, 2017, his Rahu Antardasha started and uh, he has been facing severe, severe, severe issues in his married life. But now, luckily, uh, if you check, his uh, Jupiter Antardasha is going to start from April, 5th April 2020. And Jupiter Antardasha is the last Antardasha in Saturn Mahadasha which will go on till 17th October 2022. So this should be a good time for his married life and in Jup Navamsha also Jupiter is again in the 7th house which is, uh, which is not a great placement but still a better placement. But here also it is exalted, it's in trines in the 9th house, it's a great placement. Okay, So his married life could improve after April and after that his Mercury Mahadasha will start for 17 years from 17th October 2022 to 17th October 2039 okay so because Mercury is uh, relatively more challenging than Saturn therefore we can conclude that after 2022 October when his Mahadasha starts his problems will uh, further increase okay and um, that is how life is life is full of ups and downs so we should be able to recognize when there are ups and when there are downs okay so therefore and as we already saw mercury is again in the nakshatra of sun which is the lord of the 10th house and it is again placed in the 6th house kritika nakshatra okay so therefore uh, this is how you analyze at a deeper level why the problem is coming okay so do not miss the nakshatra lords from the next time and otherwise your uh, predictions may not uh, hold a lot of significance okay thank you very much and uh, if you want a consultation from me you can always go to my website down in the description section and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know more about predictive astrology okay thank you very much see you again